G. Fineland from Long Beach, California. So it is uh, with awe and trepidation that I speak before you today, but what a great pleasure to speak to the Noshim Tzidkoniyos Neshei Chabad of Kehila Kadisha, the Crown Heights. Kan Siva Hashem Asabrocha, we say Shom Siva Hashem Asabrocha, but you know what Rabbi Yehuda Halevi says, Libi b'mizrach v'ani b'soif ma'arav. My heart is in the east, even though I might be in the furthest west. And so, right now, in the, fur in the furthest west coast, where the uh, degrees outside are more like 76, and going up to 86 this week, but uh, what a pleasure to be with you today. Um... Our hearts are always with you. We are always in tune to see what the women and, the, when, and what our Nash are doing in Crown Heights. It's the hub of the world. We are always in tune to 770 Live. Um, I just like to hear the noise of 770 in my home reverberating. Something really, really special. So, I have the opportunity to thank you all as an out-of-towner. Uh, for all the several years that you have given your homes and your Shabbos meals and your Yom Tov meals and your laundry facilities to our children, to the children of Shluchim, to the out-of-towners, how you share your homes and your streets with uh, all the foreigners and the outsiders. It's, it's such a tremendous, tremendous achnas arachim, and we all appreciate it immensely. So... So, the Rebbe tells us that we are the Akeres Habayas and we are preparing our homes. We want to make a dira, not a beautiful home, Bagashmas of and therefore we are the ones that, that are preparing the dira Besachtoinim for Hashem. And we are the ones that are in the forefront of doing just that. And when you down here, you are the inspirational ones that we all look to, wherever we may be. So, coming from Long Beach, California, where we see the Rebbe's brachas and the Rebbe's koichas constantly. I just wanted to give you a little message from my children, my second graders. I teach at the Hebrew Academy Chabad, uh, Huntington Beach, an offshoot of Long Beach. And I have different kinds of children in my class. I have children of the shluchim that live nearby. I have children whose mommies and daddies sometimes take them to shul. Never take them to shul, take them to shul only on holidays, because I just asked them for the Asiris Adibros, whose mommy is going to take them to shul, whose tati is going to take them to shul. My daddy does never take me to shul, or oh, I go to shul every week, so we have all kinds. And yesterday as I asked them for a message that they would like to give to the lovely ladies that I'll be seeing today, first they looked at me and they said, what is our Mora up to? You know, a little bit of shtus de kedusha there. But this is what they said. I had to start them off. We, and they thought for a second, okay, we. And then they, they began, and I wrote it down real quickly because I had to rush to the airport. This is what they said. Not in any order, but the order that I heard it. Second grade, Hebrew Academy, Huntington Beach, California. This is their message to you, my ladies. We are ready for Mashiach. We're learning Chumash. We're giving tzedakah. We're learning Torah and we daven. And that will help bring Mashiach closer. We are making a dira b'sachtoinim by doing mitzvahs. And then my little Yisrael Tova says, and we're bringing out the sprinkles to Hashem. And then one of the more sophisticated ones said, we're elevating the sparks. <laughs> and the kid of the shliach says, the nutsutzais. 
But this they said with all their heart and without any prompting, we are building the Beis Amikdash. And we have Mr. Nefesh. Because, because they, this is what they said. We are having Mr. Nefesh because we give up what we want for what Hashem wants. This is my little... This is what they said, and I will bring them greetings to you on Thursday, Bez Hashem. So, we have been taught that we have to live for the times when that's love and written sight. And we know that that's the Parshas HaShavua. And you know, personally, when, when it's Shabbos Chazak for, for Sefer Bereshis, I kind of say, oh, we've just been living with the obvious, with the Imahis. It's like the Bobbies and the Zadis type thing. And now we're going into the Sefer Shmois. That's us, you know? I had told the children that we are the Gilgulim of the Bnei Yisrael that left Mitzrayim. We are the Gilgulim. And so one child said, now I know why you always say we left Mitzrayim. And when Paro was mean to us, because that is how it is. It is us. And this is what we're living with now. Well, in the past, in the past, Parsha was Parsha's Yisrael. And I don't know if you ever feel this, but sometimes I come across a posuk in my old age, and I think to myself, I've read it so many times, but it didn't, I, it just didn't strike me, or maybe I forgot, or whatever it is. I also forget, by the way. Um, <laughs> It is a bracha, good, good. So I have to. Well, this is this is something that I remembered from last year when I read it. It's a, as they say, b'feirish a pasuk in the chumash. The Eibush just speaks to Moshe, and what does he say? Hine anoichi b'elacha. I'm going to come to you, but of anon in the deepest part of the cloud, so that the people will hear as I speak to you. And they will believe in you forever. This is what Hashem wants. That we should believe in the Moshe Rabbeinu Le'olam forever. And what does Rashi add? Not only in you, Moshe Rabbeinu, but in this Pashtusa de Moshe Bechal Dora. This is what it says in the Pasuk. This is what the Abishta wanted from us. And this is what the Abishta wants from us. From day one when he had the interesting concept of Oilam Hazer HaGashmi. So that was last year. And then when I read it this year, I remembered the tremendous feeling I had about that last year. But this year, there was a new Chiddush in my, in my little mind. And I'm sure I must have read it before. But did anybody read this past Shabbos, or this past week, the Sicha in Chelek Lamed Aleph. Baruch Hashem. This is what the Rebbe says. He quotes the Pasuk, Koysoyim Ele Beis Yaakov, Kulonu Chachamim, Kulonu Nevoinim. We all know what that means. Beis Yaakov, when the Ebrishta said to Moshe, when he came up on Ar Sinai, Koysoyim Ele Beis Yaakov, Ela Hanashim, we all know that, that's us. Moshe Rabbeinu was commanded to speak to us first. And then Vesagid Levnei Yisrael. And then what does Rashi add? To the women, he wants Moshe Rabbeinu to speak Balash and Raka in a gentle way. And to the men, in a more strong, aggressive way. But the Rebbe says, there's also a Mechilta, where the Rebbe, also, where the Eivishta speaks, tells Moshe to speak to us also in a kind of a different way. Hashem told Moshe Rabbeinu to speak to the woman, to the women, Rashi Dvarim, the highlights, the headlines. To the men, you can speak the more details, the, the diktukim, the pratim, the details, but to the women, speak about the Rashi Dvarim, the highlights. So the Rebbe says, you might think that that is because women aren't able to grasp concepts. Maybe they, aren't, they don't have the understanding as their fellow men. But the Rebbe says, no. This shows, the Torah wants to show the mila of the 
of the woman. What does Hashem want Moshe Rabbeinu to teach the women? The Roshe Dvarim, the highlights that contain the Etzem HaTorah, the essence and the most inner part of the Torah speak to the, to the women. Because women, their intellect will not get in the way of their emunah. Their intellect won't get into the way of the way they want to serve Eibshter and make a dira b'sach toinim. It doesn't matter what will happen. This is what we're going to do. We're going to stay strong in our faith. And that's why the Eibshter told Moshe, make sure you give the etzem ha the pnimis ha the, mo- the greatest essence of Torah to the women. And that is how it's been ever since. That is why the Rebbe and the Friedrich Rebbe, the Rebbe says, spend so much time and energy speaking to us. The Rebbe put his trust in us, that we should be the ones to prepare the Dira B'sach the home down here for the Eibishter, because we are doing it in our homes in a most gentle way. With our visitors that come in a most gentle way, we are makar of them, we bring them close. And so we are given this tremendous task that through our connection with the etzem ha-Torah, with the essence of Torah, just like the Abishta did when he gave us the Aseris Adibros. He gave us the Aseris Adibros in one big clap. Obviously, we all died away. And then the first two of the Aseris Adibros, Anoichi, that contained all the mitzvahs Asei, and the Loyiya, the second of the, of the Ten Commandments that contained all the mitzvahs Loisa Asei. That was also uh, just the, a highlight and just bringing it all up into a very essence thicker way. And so here we are today as we contemplate our Rebetzin, the Rebetzin of Malchus. So let's think a little about the directive that the Rebbe gave us during the days of Shiva and afterwards. The directive that has stayed with us since then, the hachai yiten elibai, those who are alive should take in heart, should take to heart. So our Rebetzin, the Rebetzin of Malchus, as I said, was the daughter of a Rebbe, granddaughter of the Rebbe Rashab, Aisha Samelach, the wife of the Rebbe. She knew what it was to live in the home of royalty. She knew what it was to be the wife, well, to be the wife of the Rebbe, but she saw in her home what it meant to be the wife of a Rebbe, a father and grandfather. And the Rebetzin, in her tremendous bittle and in her most dignified way, gave us the Rebbe. When she said to the Rebbe, Was wird sein mit den Tatens Arbeit? What's going to be with my father's work if the Rebbe doesn't take on the Nasius? She encouraged the Rebbe. And the Rebbe went ahead, and we have the Rebbe. So together, the Rebbe and Rebetzin shared a single-minded determination to help every single Jew at every single time and in any single place. So what does it mean to be the Rebetzin of Malchus? We know that each of our Abayim characterize one of the Midas. Malchus is the, is, the mid, is the Mida at the bottom, but Malchus really just contains and crystallizes and gives expression to all the previous midas. And this is what our Rebbe and Rebetzin have done for us. They have taken everything and, bring, and brought it down to us. In fact, the Rebbe said about the Rebetzin that she is the heir of her father and therefore the heir going all the way back to the Alter Rebbe and the Baal Shem Tov, and the Baal Shem Tov, because she embodies the strength of her father. 
And on that special day of Yudalit Kislev, when the Rebbe married the Rebbetzin, and the Rebbe said, this is the day that has bound me to you and you to me. This was our luckiest day. We have the Rebbe and the Rebbetzin that are with a focal point being Moshiach leading us to that time for which the world was created. And there are so many stories. Because our Rebetzin was, was not seen by most of us, only by those special few. And those are the stories that we hear about. But we all know of her dignity and her sneers. And because of her tremendous bittle and being the chassid of the Rebbe, you know, there are so many stories that we hear how um, uh, Bacher was, was once by the Rebbe, uh, was, was once by the Rebbeton and told her of what happened at the Fabrengen that night. How the Rebbe had said everybody should drink Lechaim and put the cup upside down. Turn the cup upside down. And the Rebbeton said, what like this? And she did the same. So there are two girses. Some say, oh, because the Rebbeton wanted to make the the Bacha feel good, so she listened to what he said. As we know, the Rebbeton was so, you know, she made everybody feel special and at home. But others say, no, the Rebbeton was the chassid of the Rebbe. She wanted to do exactly what the Rebbe had said because every action of the Rebbe is bringing us closer to that crescendo for which the world was created for the coming of Mashiach. So there was a story um, of, unfortunately, a woman whose child had a tremendous accident. Uh, awful accident, I should say. And it was 3 a.m. The Rebbe, the Rebbe had already gone home. And she wanted a bracha from the Rebbe. And she asked the secretary, please, I need a bracha from the Rebbe. And the secretary said, we'll, we'll deal with it right as soon as the Rebbe comes tomorrow morning. But she said, no, it's a matter of life and death. The doctors want to know what to do with my child. I need a bracha and I need an answer, a decision now. And so the Rebbe's, the Rebbe's secretary called up. And when the Rebbe answered the phone at 3 a.m., he was so apologetic. And the Rebbe said, don't apologize. Is this not our mission to help Jews 24 hours of the day, seven days a week. You are helping us fulfill our mission. Interestingly enough, I just had my husband speak to one of his friends who was one of the mashbaks, one of those people who got to be in the Rebbetson's home. And he said that was quite common for the Rebbetson to say that. And this is how she felt. 24-7, the Rebbe and Rebbetson our partners, in helping everybody in this world so that we can be one step closer to Mashiach. So when we hear a story of a tzaddik, it is to inspire us. When the Rebbe said the Mimer, Basilagani, and he told us his mission statement, that we are the Dor HaShavii. We are the seventh generation. Not by choice. And it will be our responsibility, man, woman, and child, to bring Mashiach. The Rebbe never went away from that direction. That was the focal point. That was the focal point. The Rebbe never deviated from that message of his mission statement. And what did the Rebbe say in that mimer? The Rebbe told us stories of chesed and avas Yisrael, and mesiris nefesh for avas Yisrael, that each of the Rebbeim did. So we know that our direction is to have avas Yisrael and to have this tremendous chesed. And so that's how we go. 
and we open our eyes, because that's what the Rebbe said we, sh we have to do, and we realize that everything is Bahashkacha Pratis. And when we meet somebody in the street, it's for a reason. We know that. Are we going to find out that reason? So when your husbands carry that fill-in with them, or their little pouch of Mitzayim fill-in, it's because they are going to meet someone in the street in the most weirdest of places that happens all the time. You see somebody, he looks like a Jew. I say to my husband, Amcha, Amcha. And he takes out his tefillin or he runs to the car and gets his tefillin. Are you Jewish? Of course. I haven't put on tefillin. Mm, I'm 86. I don't remember the last time I put on tefillin. Um, we see this all the time because we, the Rebbe has made us in tune to find these occasions and make them occasions of Avas Yisrael as we get closer and closer to the culmination, which, which is the coming of Mashiach. I want to tell you a story that is in progress right now. My son was in his Chabad center, in his Chabad house. He was learning with one of his guys. I guess you don't say that in New York. He was learning with one of his people. And suddenly he sees, looking through the window of the do front door, he sees a person with a long beard. Didn't have a yarmulke on, he had a turban. And this turbaned person with the long beard was looking in and really kind of poked his head in. And my son was wondering, what does this Sikh want in my Chabad house? So he opens the door, and the man says to my son, Rabbi, go do your job. He brings him in, welcomes him, welcomes him in, and he says, come in. He says, I've been curious, but I've never plucked up the courage to walk into this Chabad house. I have a holistic center around the corner, and I always wondered what was going on in here. So my son says, come in, tell me all about it. What's your name? I have to remember. My name is Guru Trang, something or other. Guru Trang and some other couple names. But you can call me Chaim Friedman. <laughs> you know, since Chav Shvat, ladies, we are on a new tkufa here. All kinds of things happen. And so my son says, tell me a little bit about yourself, Guru Trang Chaim Friedman. He says, Guru Trang means trembling before God. And he says, you'll even like my son's name better. His name is something something Chabad Trang. <laughs> but really it's Chabad, but it was just spelt like Chabad Trang. So my son says, come sit down. This is going to be interesting. Tell me. Tell me what's going on. He said, I spent some time in Morristown. I see you have the Rebbe on the wall. I know that man. I spent some time in Morristown, and my memories of Morristown is the rabbi singing. I hear in the forest a cry and a shout, and I often think about those lost children, said the guru. And I think maybe... What the Rebbe didn't do 25 years ago, he might be sending his men to me now to complete what he did then. This is still work in progress. So the next day was Friday, and my son brings this Guru Trang, Chaim Friedman, a chala. And he takes the chala, and he caresses it, and he smells it. And he said, I haven't had a chala for so very long. And he smelt it some more. And that was it. That was close to Purim. Pesach came along, and there was an enormous meeting of the Sikhs of America. They were going to meet the president in the White House. But Guru Trang did not go. He flew to a Seder with his sister. That was more important. That Yom Kippur, Guru Trang came to the Chabad house 
took his talus, wanted to know if his turban could be considered a yarmulke, put it on his head, and the congregants are thinking, is this a high priest? Is it Elijah the prophet? Uh, my son later on told his close chevra what was happening, and this is how it's been. A few months later, my son meets him in the post office. And he says, Guru, I haven't seen you for a while. Where you been? He says, I've been. But Rabbi, I want to tell you something. I just quoted something that you said. And I told everybody, my rabbi said so. So they said, seek. You really need a rabbi? He says, everybody needs a rabbi. <laughs> so this is what's happening out there, ladies. These are the times of Mashiach. It's still work in progress. I don't know what happened since then. But uh, these are stories that we see. Not as outlandish, but these are stories, some of the stories that we see. And why is that? My same son told me a story recently that happened when one of his, um, his mispalalim, uh, unfortunately, his son had passed away, and uh, he had passed away in the home of this man's ex-wife. And so my son said, I'm coming right over. And at the home was the rabbi of the former conservative temple where his previous wife was, his ex-wife. And she said, I haven't seen you for so long. Now you have a keeper. now you have a beard. What's been happening? He says, I'm now at Chabad. They have taught me the meaning of life. No. They have given me life. And this is what it's all about. The Rebbe and the Rebbe selflessly have brought us to this tremendous step where we're almost there. The Rebbe said, these buttons have been polished, as you all know. They've been polished and they're very, very shiny. And we're almost there. And the Rebbe put his trust in us, the Nashim Tzidkaniyas, because we did it then. And we are going to do it now. So one of the things that the Rebbe said about the Rebbetzin, speaking about the name Schnirsen, that there is such a tremendous connection, even in the family name, with the Alter Rebbe, because Schneer, son, son of Schneer. And this is how the Rebbe showed the relationship, the Rebbe says, just like a father gives a son all that he has at birth, and then inherits, gives us an inheritance to the child afterwards, all the koiches. And our Rebbetzin is that heir. And we all know the anecdote that happened during the Shiva. When somebody asked the Rebbe about the greatness of the Rebbetzin, and the Rebbe, the Rebbe said, only Hashem knows about her greatness. Only Hashem knows. But the, Rebbe gave, the Rebbetzin gave us the Rebbe in such a strong, tangible way, and even more so on Hey Teves, when she said, as we saw in the video before, when she said, The books belong to the Hasidim because the Rebbe belongs to the Hasidim. And so what are we doing now? The Rebbe mentioned that there are three tkufas, that there are three periods in history. Before Yod Shvat, after Yod Shvat, Yod Aleph, Shvat, Tovshin Yod, and then after Chaf Beis Shvat. And at that point, we see that the Rebbe's message just keeps getting stronger and stronger. You know, I always think about the Shafer at, at Har Sinai. We're told that the Shafer at Har Sinai was going stronger and stronger. And being a second grade teacher right now, I have to give them a little marshal, not like a person. When you hear the Baltikia, or Baltikia, however you want to pronounce it, blow the shofar on Rosh Hashanah, 
you're going to hear them get weaker and weaker. But the shafer at Har Sinai was getting louder and louder. And so has the Rebbe's message. One day, before the Rebbe was Rebbe, he came down the steps from being with the Friedrich Rebbe, and in the foyer in the hall, he met two Bochren, Rabbi Fogelman and Rabbi Edelman. Shalom. And the Rebbe said to them, Bochrim, do you want to hear a story that just happened with a Rebbe? Of course, they were all ears. And this is what the Rebbe told them. He said, there have been people in 770, the elder of Hasidim, who have been criticizing me, kind of, and telling me, how can you be so accepting of all the people who come to Crown Heights and come to 770, who are so far away from Yiddishkeit. How come you accept them with so much love and give them so much attention? It is like condoning their behavior. It is like you're saying it's okay to be what you are. So I decided I better ask the Rebbe, says, says our Rebbe. So I went upstairs and this is what the Rebbe just said. The Rebbe said like this. So it's a story in a story. When parents have children, they give their children the utmost that they can. They give them attention. They give them love. The love that you have for one child, your heart is so full, it can love hundreds of children. But when chas v'shalom, there is a child with special needs in the family, that child needs extra attention. That child needs extra care. That child will need extra time devoted to him. It is obvious. There are special children in the world, the Friedrich Rebbe said to our Rebbe. There are special children in the world that require special attention. If so in Gashmias, how much more so in Ruchnias? With that, the Rebbe took off and never looked back. And that is what the Rebbe has imbued in us. That we are there to help our fellow. No matter where we may be, no matter what that person might be like. Whether it's the guru trunks or the little children with the sprinkles who want to be close to Hashem, we are there because the Rebbe has taken us here and we're almost there. And the Rebbe's message is just getting stronger and stronger. Remember how the Rebbe ends off each sikha. That Mashiach is going to come because of Mamish in all the different ways that the Rebbe expressed it. It wasn't that that was just an ending, how we end, or maybe how I end off a talk. And Mashiach should come, and it should be now. The Rebbe got louder and louder. This was the main focus of the Sikha. This was the purpose of the Sikha. It is for the coming of Mashiach. We know that is the Rebbe's vision. And we know, my ladies, that the Rebbe has entrusted so much of that to us. And so tonight, as we think about the Rebbetzin, v'hachayit in the Liboy, and we think about the message that the Rebbe has given us time and time again about us being the Akera Sabayas. And about us being the ones who brought Mashiach, who brought the Geula then. And how we are the Doer Hashvi'i, the last generation of Golas and the first generation of Geula. And how it is here, we just have to open our eyes. Hine, Hine, Mashiach, Ba. And it just requires a little something from our part. You know what they say. That when a person is passed on, what did this person shine in? What was special about this person? Why does he deserve to be in a special place? All of us shine in special areas. This is the way the Abishta has made us. We're all different. We all shine in different ways. 
Those are the ways that we can go forward with, with those special midas and those, those special mitzvahs that we are so careful in. But then there are those mitzvahs that we are a little weary of or not so good at or maybe don't know how to do yet. So these are those special mitzvahs that we also have to work on. We all know what they are, but it's to be done with simcha and with dignity and with pride because we know when we stood around Har Sinai, why did the Abish to choose Har Sinai? Because it was humble, but it was still a mountain. We have a tremendous Jewish pride within us. We have a tremendous Hasidish pride within us. We have the Rebbe's and Rebbetson's pride within us. We are called by their name. Our smile is the Rebbe's smile, is the Rebbetson's smile. So may we go forward. May we have tremendous belief and munah in the Novi of our time. Just like the Abishta said in the Beferisha Pasuk in Yisrael. May we go forward with a message as being the Akeres Habayas, preparing our homes to be beautiful Begashmes of Ruchnius in a small way, a Mikdash Ma'at, but then making it shine through to our areas, to the people around us, to our communities, to our cities, to our countries, and to the world at last. So I bring you greetings from California, the land of sun. And I will bring your regards back to all of the people that I meet. The, tr the tremendous hakara satoiv that we have for all of you, for being who you are. And the Abishta should help that we should see Moshiach now. And that we should give the Rebbe a tremendous amount of nachas. We should give the Rebbetson a tremendous amount of